Xi Jinping Chinese, Xi Jinping Mandarin, I Tin, P, born the 15th of June 1953, is a Chinese politician serving as General Secretary of the Communist Party of China (CPC), President of the People's Republic of China, and Chairman of the Central Military Commission. Often described as China's paramount leader, in 2016 the CPC officially gave him the title of core leader. As General Secretary, she holds an ex officio seat on the Politburo Standing Committee of the Communist Party of China, China's top decision making body. She is the first General Secretary born after the Second World War and the establishment of the People's Republic of China. The son of Chinese Communist veteran Shi Zhongxuan, he was exiled to rural Yanshuan County as a teenager following his father's purge during the Cultural Revolution, and lived in a cave in the village of Liangjiahe, where he organized communal laborers. After studying at the Tsinghua University as a worker peasant soldier student, she rose through the ranks politically in China's coastal provinces. She was governor of Fujian province from 1999 to 2002, and governor, then party secretary of neighboring Zhejiang province from 2002 to 2007. Following the dismissal of Chen Liangyu, she was transferred to Shanghai as party secretary for a brief period in 2007. He joined the Politburo Standing Committee and Central Secretariat in October 2007, spending the next five years as Hu Jintao's presumed successor. She was vice president from 2008 to 2013 and vice chairman of the Central Military Commission from 2010 to 2012. Since assuming power, she has introduced far-ranging measures to enforce party discipline and to ensure internal unity. His signature anti-corruption campaign has led to the downfall of prominent incumbent and retired Communist Party officials, including members of the Politburo Standing Committee. Described as a Chinese nationalist, he has tightened restrictions over civil society and ideological discourse, advocating Internet censorship in China as the concept of Internet sovereignty. She has called for further socialist market economic reforms, for governing according to the law and for strengthening legal institutions, with an emphasis on individual and national aspirations under the slogan, Chinese Dream. He has also championed a more assertive foreign policy, particularly with regard to China-Japan relations, China's claims in the South China Sea, and its role as a leading advocate of free trade and globalization. She has sought to expand China's Eurasian influence through the One Belt One Road Initiative. The 2015 meeting between Xi and Taiwanese President Ma ying zhou marked the first time the political leaders of both sides of the Taiwan Strait have met since the end of the Chinese Civil War in 1950. Considered the central figure of the fifth generation of leadership of the People's Republic, Xi has significantly centralized institutional power by taking on a wide range of leadership positions, including chairing the newly formed National Security Commission, as well as new steering committees on economic and social reforms, military restructuring structuring and modernization, and the Internet. Said to be one of the most powerful leaders in modern Chinese history, Xi's political thoughts have been written into the party and state constitutions, and under his leadership the latter was amended to abolish term limits for the presidency. In 2018, Forbes ranked him as the most powerful and influential person in the world, dethroning Vladimir Putin who held the accolade for five consecutive years. Early life and education Xi Jinping was born in Beijing on 15 June 1953. After the founding of the People's Republic of China in 1949 by Mao Zedong, Xi's father held a series of posts, including propaganda chief, vice premier, and vice chairman of the National People's Congress. Xi's father is from Fuping County, Shaanxi, and Xi could further trace his patrilineal descent from Xing and Dengzhou, Henan. He is the second son of Xi Jiangshuan and his wife Qi Xin. In 1963, when Xi was age 10, his father was purged from the party and sent to work in a factory in Luoyang, Henan. In May 1966, the Cultural Revolution cut short Xi's secondary education when all secondary classes were halted for students to criticize and fight their teachers. Student militants ransacked the Xi family home and one of Xi's sisters, Xi Heping, was killed. Later, his mother was forced to publicly denounce him as he was paraded before a crowd as an enemy of the revolution. Xi was aged 15 when his father was imprisoned in 1968 during the Cultural Revolution. He would not see his father again until 1972. 
Without the protection of his father, she was sent to work in Liangjiahe village, Wenani town, Yanshuan county, Yan'an, Shaanxi, in 1969 in Mao Zedong's Down to the Countryside movement. After a few months, unable to stand rural life, he ran away to Beijing. He was arrested during a crackdown on deserters from the countryside and sent to a work camp to dig ditches. He later became the party branch secretary of the production team, leaving that post in 1975. When asked later about this experience by Chinese state television, she recalled, It was emotional. It was a mood. And when the ideals of the Cultural Revolution could not be realized, it proved an illusion. From 1975 to 1979, she studied chemical engineering at Beijing's Tsinghua University as a worker peasant soldier student. Their engineering majors spent about one fifth of their time studying Marxism Leninism Mao Zedong thought, doing farm work, and learning from the People's Liberation Army. From 1979 to 1982, she served as secretary for his father's former subordinate Zheng Biao, the then vice premier and secretary general of the Central Military Commission. This gained Xi some military background. In 1985, as part of a Chinese delegation to study U.S. agriculture, he stayed in the home of an American family in the town of Muscatine, Iowa. This trip, and his two-week stay with a U.S. family, is said to have had a lasting impression upon him and his views on the United States. From 1998 to 2002, he studied Marxist philosophy and ideological education in an on-the-job postgraduate program at the School of Humanities and Social Sciences, again at Tsinghua University. He obtained a Doctor of Law LLD degree covering the fields of law, politics, management, and revolutionary history. Topic. Rise to power Xi joined the Communist Youth League of China in 1971. In 1973 he applied to join the Communist Party of China ten times and was finally accepted on his tenth attempt in 1974. In 1982, he was sent to Zhengding County in Hebei as Deputy Party Secretary of Zhengding County. He was promoted in 1983 to secretary, becoming the top official of the county. Xi subsequently served in four provinces during his regional political career, Hebei 1982-1985, Fujian 1985-2002, Zhejiang 2002-2007, and Shanghai 2007. Xi held posts in the Fuzhou Municipal Party Committee and became the president of the party school in Fuzhou in 1990. In 1997, he was named an alternate member of the 15th Central Committee of the Communist Party of China. However, of the 151 alternate members of the Central Committee elected at the 15th Party Congress, Xi received the lowest number of votes in favor, placing him last in the rankings of members, ostensibly due to his status as a princeling. In 1999, he was promoted to the office of vice governor of Fujian, then he became governor a year later. In Fujian, Xi made efforts to attract investment from Taiwan and to strengthen the private sector of the provincial economy. In February 2000, he and then Provincial Party Secretary Chen Mingyi were called before the top members of the Party Central Politburo Standing Committee of the Communist Party of China, General Secretary Zhang Zemin, Premier Zhu Rongji, Vice President Hu Jintao and Discipline Inspection Secretary Wei Jianxing, to explain aspects of the Yuanhua scandal. In 2002, Xi left Fujian and took up leading political positions in neighboring Zhejiang. He eventually took over as provincial party chief after several months as acting governor, occupying a top provincial office for the first time in his career. In 2002, he was elected a full member of the 16th Central Committee, marking his ascension to the national stage. While in Zhejiang, Xi presided over reported growth rates averaging 14% per year. His career in Zhejiang was marked by a tough and straightforward stance against corrupt officials. This earned him a name in the national media and drew the attention of China's top leaders. Following the dismissal of Shanghai Party Chief Chen Liangyu in September 2006 due to a social security fund scandal, she was transferred to Shanghai in March 2007 to become the party chief there. He spent only seven months in Shanghai, but his appointment to one of the most important regional posts in China sent a clear signal that he was highly regarded by China's top leadership. In Shanghai, she avoided controversy and was known for strictly observing party discipline. 
For example, Shanghai administrators attempted to earn favor with him by arranging a special train to shuttle him between Shanghai and Hangzhou for him to complete handing off his work to his successor as Zhejiang Party Chief Zhao Hongzhu. However, Xi reportedly refused to take the train, citing a loosely enforced party regulation which stipulated that special trains can only be reserved for national leaders. While in Shanghai, he worked on preserving unity of the local party organization. He pledged there would be no purges during his administration, despite the fact many local officials were thought to have been implicated in the Chen Liangyu corruption scandal. On most issues Xi largely echoed the line of the central leadership. Politburo Standing Committee member Xi was appointed to the nine-man Politburo Standing Committee of the Communist Party of China at the 17th Party Congress in October 2007. He was ranked above Li Keqiang, an indication that he was going to succeed Hu Jintao as China's next leader. In addition, Xi also held the top-ranking membership of the Communist Party's Central Secretariat. This assessment was further supported at the 11th National People's Congress in March 2008, when she was elected as Vice President of the People's Republic of China. Following his elevation, she has held a broad range of portfolios. He was put in charge of the comprehensive preparations for the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing, as well as being the central government's leading figure in Hong Kong and Macau affairs. In addition, he also became the new president of the Central Party School of the Communist Party of China, the cadre training and ideological education wing of the Communist Party. In the wake of the 2008 Sichuan earthquake, Xi visited disaster areas in Shaanxi and Gansu. He made his first foreign trip as vice president to North Korea, Mongolia, Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Yemen from 17 to 25 June 2008. After the Olympics, she was assigned the post of committee chair for the preparations of the 60th anniversary celebrations of the founding of the People's Republic of China. He was also reportedly at the helm of a top-level Communist Party committee dubbed the 6521 Project, which was charged with ensuring social stability during a series of politically sensitive anniversaries in 2009. She is considered one of the most successful members of the Crown Prince Party, a quasi-clique of politicians who are descendants of early Chinese communist revolutionaries. Former Prime Minister of Singapore, Li Kuan Yew, when asked about Xi, said he felt he was a thoughtful man who has gone through many trials and tribulations." Li also commented, I would put him in the Nelson Mandela class of persons. A person with enormous emotional stability who does not allow his personal misfortunes or sufferings affect his judgment. In other words, he is impressive." Former U.S. Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson described Xi as, the kind of guy who knows how to get things over the goal line. Australian Prime Minister Kevin Rudd said that she has sufficient reformist, party and military background to be very much his own man. Former U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton tweeted, she hosting a meeting on women's rights at the UN while persecuting feminists? Shameless. <laughs> Topic. Trips as Vice President and Mexico Commentary Incident In February 2009, in his capacity as vice president, Xi Jinping embarked on a tour of Latin America, visiting Mexico, Jamaica, Colombia, Venezuela, and Brazil to promote Chinese ties in the region and boost the country's reputation in the wake of the global financial crisis. He also visited Valletta, Malta, before returning to China. On the 11th of February, while visiting Mexico, she spoke in front of a group of overseas Chinese and explained China's contributions to the financial crisis, saying that it was the greatest contribution towards the whole of human race, made by China, to prevent its 1.3 billion people from hunger. He went on to remark. There are some bored foreigners, with full stomachs, who have nothing better to do than point fingers at us. First, China doesn't export revolution, second, China doesn't export hunger and poverty, third, China doesn't come and cause you headaches. What more is there to be said?" The story was reported on some local television stations. The news led to a flood of discussions on Chinese internet forums. 
It was reported that the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs was caught off guard by Xi's remarks, as the actual video was shot by some accompanying Hong Kong reporters and broadcast on Hong Kong TV, which then turned up on various internet video websites. Xi continued his international trips, some say to burnish his foreign affairs credentials prior to taking the helm of China's leadership. In the European Union, she visited Belgium, Germany, Bulgaria, Hungary and Romania from 7 October to 21, 2009. He visited Japan, South Korea, Cambodia, and Myanmar on his Asian trip from 14 to of December 2009. She visited the United States, Ireland and Turkey in February 2012. This visit included meeting with then U.S. President Barack Obama at the White House and then Vice President Joe Biden, and stops in California and Iowa, where he met with the family which previously hosted him during his 1985 tour as a Hebei provincial official. Disappearance <inaudible> 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 A few months before his ascendancy to the party leadership, Xi disappeared from official media coverage for several weeks beginning on 1 September 2012. On 4 September, he cancelled a meeting with U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, and later also cancelled meetings with Singapore's Prime Minister Li Xianlong and a top Russian official. It was said that Xi effectively went on strike in preparation for the power transition in order to install political allies in key roles. The Washington Post reported that she may have been injured in an altercation during a meeting of the Red Second Generation, which turned violent. <inaudible> <inaudible> Leadership Accession <inaudible> 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 to top posts On 15 November 2012, she was elected to the post of General Secretary of the Communist Party and Chairman of the CPC Central Military Commission by the 18th Central Committee of the Communist Party of China. This made him, informally, the paramount leader and the first to be born in the People's Republic of China and not a preceding Chinese state. The following day she led the new lineup of the Politburo Standing Committee onto the stage in their first public appearance. The new standing committee reduced its number of seats from nine to seven, with only Xi himself and Li Keqiang retaining their seats from the previous standing committee, the remaining members were new. In a marked departure from the common practice of Chinese leaders, Xi's first speech as general secretary was plainly worded and did not include any political slogans or mention of his predecessors. Xi mentioned the aspirations of the average person, remarking, Our people, Expect better education, more stable jobs, better income, more reliable social security, medical care of a higher standard, more comfortable living conditions, and a more beautiful environment." She also vowed to tackle corruption at the highest levels, alluding that it would threaten the party's survival. He was reticent about far-reaching economic reforms. In December 2012, she visited Guangdong in his first trip outside Beijing since taking the party leadership. The overarching theme of the trip was to call for further economic reform and a strengthened military. She visited the statue of Deng Xiaoping and his trip was described as following in the footsteps of Deng's own southern trip in 1992, which provided the impetus for further economic reforms in China after conservative party leaders stalled many of Deng's reforms in the aftermath of the Tiananmen Square protests of 1989. On his trip, she consistently alluded to his signature slogan the Chinese Dream. This dream can be said to be the dream of a strong nation. And for the military, it is a dream of a strong military." She told sailors. Xi's trip was significant in that he departed from the established convention of Chinese leaders' travel routines in multiple ways. Rather than dining out, she and his entourage ate regular hotel buffet. He traveled in a large van with his colleagues rather than a fleet of limousines, and did not restrict traffic on the parts of the highway he traveled. She was elected president of the People's Republic of China on 14 March 2013, in a confirmation vote by the 12th National People's Congress in Beijing. He received 2,952 for, one vote against, and three abstentions. He replaced Hu Jintao, who retired after serving two terms. 
In his new capacity as president, on 16 March 2013 Xi expressed support for non-interference in China-Sri Lanka relations amid a United Nations Security Council vote to condemn that country over government abuses during the Sri Lankan Civil War. On 17 March, Xi and his new ministers arranged a meeting with the chief executive of Hong Kong, Tsai Leung, confirming his support for Leung. Within hours of his election, she discussed cybersecurity in North Korea with U.S. President Barack Obama over the phone. Obama announced the visits of Treasury and State Secretaries Jacob Liu and John F. Kerry to China the following week. Within a week of assuming the presidency, she embarked on a trip to Russia, Tanzania, South Africa, and the Republic of Congo. Topic: <laughs> Announcing reforms. In November 2013, at the conclusion of the Third Plenum of the 18th Central Committee, the Communist Party delivered a far-reaching reform agenda that alluded to changes in both economic and social policy. Xi signaled at the plenum that he was consolidating control of the massive internal security organization that was formerly the domain of Zhou Yongkong. A new National Security Commission was formed with Xi at its helm. The central leading group for comprehensively deepening reforms, Another ad hoc policy coordination body led by Xi was also formed to oversee the implementation of the reform agenda. Termed comprehensive deepening reforms, Quanmian Shen Hua Gai Zhe Quanmian Shen Hua Gai Zhe, they were said to be the most significant since Deng Xiaoping's 1992 Southern Tour. In the economic realm, the plenum announced that market forces would begin to play a decisive role in allocating resources. This meant that the state would gradually reduce its involvement in the distribution of capital, and restructure state-owned enterprises to allow further competition, potentially by attracting foreign and private sector players in industries that were previously highly regulated. This policy aimed to address the bloated state sector that had unduly profited from an earlier round of restructuring by purchasing assets at below market prices, assets which were no longer being used productively. The plenum also resolved to abolish the Laogai system of re-education through labor, which was largely seen as a blot on China's human rights record. The system has faced significant criticism for years from domestic critics and foreign observers. The one-child policy was also abolished, resulting in a shift to a two-child policy from the 1st of January 2016. In December 2013, she arrived unannounced at a small Beijing restaurant to have steamed buns for lunch, with only one person accompanying him. He paid for the meal himself and dined with regular patrons. She was applauded for the common touch of the visit, and images were circulated widely on social media. <laughs> Anti-corruption campaign She vowed to crack down on corruption almost immediately after he ascended to power at the 18th Party Congress. In his inaugural speech as General Secretary, she mentioned that fighting corruption was one of the toughest challenges for the party. A few months into his term, she outlined the eight-point guide, listing rules intended to curb corruption and waste during official party business. It aimed at stricter discipline on the conduct of party officials. She also vowed to root out tigers and flies, that is, high-ranking officials and ordinary party functionaries. During the first two years of Xi's term, he initiated cases against former Central Military Commission Vice Chairman Xu Kaihao, former Politburo Standing Committee member and Security Chief Zhou Yang Kong and former Hu Jintao Chief Aide Ling Jiwa. Along with new disciplinary chief Wang Kishan, Xi's administration spearheaded the formation of centrally dispatched inspection teams, Zhang Yang Xuan Shi Zhu. These were essentially cross-jurisdictional squads of officials whose main task was to gain more in-depth understanding of the operations of provincial and local party organizations, and in the process, also enforce party discipline mandated by Beijing. Many of the work teams also had the effect of identifying and initiating investigations of high-ranking officials. Over 100 provincial ministerial-level officials were implicated during a massive nationwide anti-corruption campaign. These included former and current regional officials Su Rong, Bai Enpei, Wan Qingliang, leading figures of state-owned enterprises and central government organs Song Lin, Lu Tinan, and highly ranked generals in the military Gu Junshan. 
In June 2014, the Shaanxi Provincial Political Establishment was decimated, with four officials dismissed within a week from the provincial party organization's top ranks. Within the first two years of the campaign alone, over 200,000 low-ranking officials received warnings, fines, and demotions. Topic. Consolidation of power Political observers have called Xi the most powerful Chinese leader since Mao Zedong, especially since the ending of presidential two-term limits in 2018. Xi has notably departed from the collective leadership practices of his post-Mao predecessors. He has centralized his power and created working groups with himself at the head to subvert government bureaucracy, making himself become the unmistakable central figure of the new administration. Beginning in 2013, the party under Xi has created a series of new, central leading groups. These are supra-ministerial steering committees, designed to bypass existing institutions when making decisions, and ostensibly make policy making a more efficient process. The most notable new body is the Central Leading Group for Comprehensively Deepening Reforms. It has broad jurisdiction over economic restructuring and social reforms, and is said to have displaced some of the power previously held by the State Council and its Premier. She also became the leader of the Central Leading Group for Internet Security and Informatization, in charge of cyber security and Internet policy. The third plenum held in 2013 also saw the creation of the National Security Commission of the Communist Party of China, another body chaired by Xi. This is believed to have ultimate oversight over issues of national security such as combating terrorism, intelligence, espionage, ultimately incorporating many areas of jurisdiction formerly vested in the Central Political and Legal Affairs Commission under Zhou Yangkong. Xi has also been active in his participation in military affairs, taking a direct hands-on approach to military reform. In addition to being the chairman of the Central Military Commission, and the leader of the Central Leading Group for Military Reform founded in 2014 to oversee comprehensive military reforms, she has delivered numerous high-profile pronouncements vowing to clean up malfeasance and complacency in the military, aiming to build a more effective fighting force. In addition, she held the New Gutian Conference in 2014, gathering China's top military officers, re-emphasizing the principle of the party has absolute control over the army, first established by Mao at the 1929 Gutian Conference. According to a University of California, San Diego expert on Chinese military, she has been able to take political control of the military to an extent that exceeds what Mao and Deng have done. On 21 April 2016 Xi was named Commander-in-Chief of the country's new Joint Operations Command Center of the People's Liberation Army by Xinhua News Agency and the broadcaster China Central Television. Some analysts interpreted this move as an attempt to display strength and strong leadership and as being more political than military. According to Ni Leshong, a military affairs expert, Xi not only controls the military but also does it in an absolute manner, and that in wartime, he is ready to command personally. <laughs> cult of personality She has had a cult of personality constructed around himself since entering office, with books, cartoons, pop songs and even dance routines, honoring his rule. Following Xi's ascension to the leadership core of the CPC, he has been referred to as Xi Dada Uncle or Papa Xi. The village of Liangjiahe, where Xi was sent to work, has become a modern-day shrine, decorated with communist propaganda and murals extolling the formative years of his life. <laughs> Legal reforms The party under Xi announced a raft of legal reforms at the Fourth Plenum held in the fall 2014, and he called for Chinese socialistic rule of law immediately afterwards. The party aimed to reform the legal system which had been perceived as ineffective at delivering justice and affected by corruption, local government interference and lack of constitutional oversight. The plenum, while emphasizing the absolute leadership of the party, also called for a greater role of the constitution in the affairs of state and a strengthening of the role of the National People's Congress Standing Committee in interpreting the constitution. 
It also called for more transparency in legal proceedings, more involvement of ordinary citizens in the legislative process, and an overall professionalization of the legal workforce. The party also planned to institute cross-jurisdictional circuit legal tribunals as well as giving provinces consolidated administrative oversight over lower-level legal resources, which is intended to reduce local government involvement in legal proceedings. <laughs> Foreign trips as president Xi made his first foreign trip as president to Russia on the 22nd of March 2013, about a week after he assumed the office. He met with President Vladimir Putin and the two leaders discussed trade and energy issues. He then went on to Tanzania, South Africa, where he attended the BRICS summit in Durban, and the Republic of the Congo. Xi visited the United States at Sunnylands Estate in California in a shirt sleeve summit with U.S. President Barack Obama in June 2013, although this was not considered a formal state visit. In October 2013, Xi attended the APEC summit in Bali, Indonesia. In March 2014 she made a trip to Western Europe visiting the Netherlands, where he attended the Nuclear Security Summit in The Hague, followed by visits to France, Germany and Belgium. He made a state visit to South Korea on 4 July 2014 and met with South Korean President Park jun hye between 14 and 23 July, she attended the BRICS Leaders Summit in Brazil and visited Argentina, Venezuela, and Cuba. She went on an official state visit to India and met with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in September 2014. He visited New Delhi and also went to Modi's hometown in the state of Gujarat. He went on a state visit to Australia and met with Prime Minister Tony Abbott in November 2014, followed by a visit to the island nation of Fiji. She visited Pakistan in April 2015, signing a series of infrastructure deals related to the China Pakistan Economic Corridor. He then headed to Jakarta and Bandung, Indonesia, to attend the Afro-Asian Leaders Summit and the 60th anniversary events of the Bandung Conference. She visited Russia and was the guest of honor of Russian President Vladimir Putin at the 2015 Moscow Victory Day Parade to mark the 70th anniversary of the victory of the Allies in Europe. At the parade she and his wife Peng Liyuan sat next to Putin. On the same trip she also visited Kazakhstan and met with that country's president Nursultan Nazarbayev, and also met Alexander Lukashenko in Belarus. In September 2015, she made his first state visit to the United States. In October 2015, he made a state visit to the United Kingdom, the first by a Chinese leader in a decade. This followed a visit to China in March 2015 by the Duke of Cambridge. During the state visit, she met Queen Elizabeth II, British Prime Minister David Cameron and other dignitaries. Increased customs, trade and research collaborations between China and the UK were discussed, but more informal events also took place including a visit to Manchester City's Football Academy. In March 2016, she visited the Czech Republic on his way to United States. In Prague, he met with the Czech president, prime minister and other representatives to promote relations and economic cooperation between the Czech Republic and the People's Republic of China. His visit was met by a considerable number of protests by Czechs. In January 2017, she became the first Chinese president to plan to attend the World Economic Forum in Davos. On January 17, she addressed the forum in a high-profile keynote, addressing globalization, the global trade agenda, and China's rising place in the world's economy and international governance. He made a series of pledges about China's defense of economic globalization and climate change accords. Premier Li Keqiang attended the forum in 2015 and Vice President Li Yuanchao did so in 2016. During the three-day state visit to the country in 2017 she also visited the World Health Organization, the United Nations and the International Olympic Committee. <laughs> Cultural revival As communist ideology plays a less central role in the lives of the masses in the People's Republic of China, top political leaders of the Communist Party of China such as Xi continue the rehabilitation of ancient Chinese philosophical figures like Han Fei into the mainstream of Chinese thought alongside Confucianism, both of which Xi sees as relevant. He who rules by virtue is like the pole star, he said at a meeting of officials last year, quoting Confucius. 
it maintains its place, and the multitude of stars pay homage." In Shandong, the birthplace of Confucius, he told scholars that while the West was suffering a "'crisis of confidence," the Communist Party had been "'the loyal inheritor and promoter of China's outstanding traditional culture." Han Fei gained new prominence with favorable citations. One sentence of Han Fei's that she quoted appeared thousands of times in official Chinese media at the local, provincial, and national levels. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Removal of term limits. In March 2018, the party-controlled National People's Congress passed a set of constitutional amendments including removal of term limits for the president and vice president, the creation of a national supervisory commission, as well as enhancing the central role of the Communist Party. On 17 March 2018, the Chinese legislature reappointed Xi as president, now without term limits, Wang Kishan was appointed vice president. The following day Li Keqiang was reappointed premier and longtime allies of Shi Shu Qiliang and Zhang Yuxia were voted in as vice chairman of the State Military Commission. Foreign Minister Wang Yi was promoted to state councillor and General Wei Feng was named defense minister. According to the Financial Times, Xi expressed his views of constitutional amendment at meetings with Chinese officials and foreign dignitaries. Xi explained the decision in terms of needing to align two more powerful posts. General Secretary of the Communist Party and Chairman of the Central Military Commission CMC, which have no term limits. However, she did not say whether he intended to serve as Party General Secretary, CMC Chairman and State President, for three or more terms. <laughs> <laughs> Political positions Topic. Chinese dream Xi and Communist Party ideologues coined the phrase, Chinese dream, to describe his overarching plans for China as its leader. Xi first used the phrase during a high-profile visit to the National Museum of China on 29 November 2012, where he and his standing committee colleagues were attending a national revival exhibition. Since then, the phrase has become the signature political slogan of the Xi era. Since 2013, the phrase has emerged as the distinctive quasi-official ideology of the party leadership under Xi, much as the scientific outlook on development was for Hu Jintao and the three represents was for Zhang Zemin. The origin of the term Chinese dream is unclear. While the phrase has been used before by journalists and scholars, some publications have posited the term likely drew its inspiration from the concept of the American dream. The Economist noted the abstract and seemingly accessible nature of the concept with no specific overarching policy stipulations may be a deliberate departure from the jargon-heavy ideologies of his predecessors. While the Chinese dream was originally interpreted as an extension of the American dream, which emphasizes individual self-improvement and opportunity, the slogans used in official settings since 2013 has taken on a noticeably more nationalistic character, with official pronouncements of the dream being consistently linked with the phrase great revival of the Chinese nation. The policy implications of the Chinese dream remain unclear. Topic. Xi Jinping thought In September 2017, the Communist Party Central Committee decided that Xi's political philosophies, generally referred to as Xi Jinping thought, by Western sources, would become part of the party constitution. Xi first made mention of the thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era in his opening day speech delivered to the 19th Party Congress in October 2017. His Politburo Standing Committee colleagues, in their own reviews of Xi's keynote address at the Congress, propended the name, Xi Jinping, in front of, thought. Xi himself has described the thought as part of the broad framework created around socialism with Chinese characteristics, a dangerous term that places China in the, primary stage of socialism. In official party documentation and pronouncements by Xi's colleagues, the thought is said to be a continuation of Marxism-Leninism, Mao Zedong thought, Deng Xiaoping theory, the three represents, and the scientific development perspective, as part of a series of guiding ideologies that embody Marxism adopted to Chinese conditions. 
and contemporary considerations. On the 24th of October 2017, at its closing session, the 19th Party Congress approved the incorporation of Xi Jinping thought into the constitution of the Communist Party of China. The concepts and context behind Xi Jinping thought are elaborated in Xi's The Governance of China book series, published by the Foreign Languages Press for an international audience. Volume 1 was published in September 2014, followed by Volume 2 in November 2017. <inaudible> <inaudible> foreign policy Xi has reportedly taken a hard line on security issues as well as foreign affairs, projecting a more nationalistic and assertive China on the world stage. His political program calls for a China more united and confident of its own value system and political structure. Under Xi, China has also taken a more critical stance on North Korea, while improving relationships with South Korea. China Japan relations have soured under Xi's administration. The most thorny issue between the two countries remains the dispute over the Senkaku, Gyaoyu Islands. In response to Japan's continued robust stance on the issue, China declared an air defense identification zone in November 2013. She has called China United States relations in the contemporary world a new type of great power relations, a phrase the Obama administration had been reluctant to embrace. Under his administration, the strategic and economic dialogue that began under Hu Jintao has continued. On China US relations, she said, if China and the United States are in confrontation, it would surely spell disaster for both countries." The U.S. has been critical of Chinese actions in the South China Sea. In 2014, Chinese hackers compromised the computer system of the U.S. Office of Personnel Management, resulting in the theft of approximately 22 million personnel records handled by the office. She has cultivated stronger relations with Russia, particularly in the wake of the Ukraine crisis of 2014. He seems to have developed a strong personal relationship with President Vladimir Putin. Both are viewed as strong leaders with a nationalist orientation who are not afraid to assert themselves against Western interests. She attended the opening ceremonies of the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi. Under Xi, China signed a $400 billion gas deal with Russia. China has also become Russia's largest trading partner. He has signaled a greater interest in Central Asia as evidenced by China's One Belt One Road initiative. Xi made the announcement while in Astana, Kazakhstan, and called it a golden opportunity. Xi has also indirectly spoken out critically on the U.S. strategic pivot to Asia. Addressing a regional conference in Shanghai on 21 May 2014, he called on Asian countries to unite and forge a way together, rather than get involved with third-party powers, seen as a reference to the United States. Matters in Asia ultimately must be taken care of by Asians. Asia's problems ultimately must be resolved by Asians and Asia's security ultimately must be protected by Asians. He told the conference, in November 2014, in a major policy address, she called for a decrease in the use of force, preferring dialogue and consultation to solve the current issues plaguing the relationship between China and its Southeast Asian neighbors. In April 2015 she led a large delegation on a state visit to Pakistan. During this visit he signed energy and infrastructure deals worth $45 billion including the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. Pakistan's highest civilian award, the Nishan-e-Pakistan, was conferred upon him. In April 2015, new satellite imagery revealed that China was rapidly constructing an airfield on Fiery Cross Reef in the Spratly Islands of the South China Sea. In May 2015, U.S. Secretary of Defense Ash Carter warned the government of Xi Jinping to halt its rapid island building in disputed territory in the South China Sea. In spite of what seemed to be a tumultuous start to Xi Jinping's leadership vis-a-vis -vis the United States, on 13 May 2017 Xi said at the Belt and Road Forum in Beijing, we should foster a new type of international relations featuring win-win cooperation, and we should forge a partnership of dialogue with no confrontation, and a partnership of friendship rather than alliance. All countries should respect each other's sovereignty, dignity and territorial integrity, respect each other's development path and its social systems, and respect each other's core interests and major concerns. What we hope to create is a big family of harmonious coexistence. <laughs> Role of the Communist Party 
Early on in his term, Xi repeatedly issued pronouncements on the supremacy of the Communist Party, largely echoing Deng Xiaoping's line that effective economic reform can only take place within the one-party political framework. In his view, the Communist Party is the legitimate, constitutionally sanctioned ruling party of China, and that the party derives this legitimacy through advancing the Mao-style mass line campaign, that is the party represents the interests of the overwhelming majority of ordinary people. In this vein, Xi called for officials to practice mild self-criticism in order to appear less corrupt and more popular among the people. Xi's position has been described as preferring highly centralized political power as a means to direct large-scale economic restructuring. Xi believes that China should be following its own path and that a strong authoritarian government is an integral part of the China model, operating on a core socialist value system which has been interpreted as China's alternative to Western values. However, Xi and his colleagues acknowledge the challenges to the legitimacy of communist rule, particularly corruption by party officials. The answer, according to Xi's program, is twofold, strengthen the party from within, by streamlining strict party discipline and initiating a large anti-corruption campaign to remove unsavory elements from within the party, and reinstituting the mass line campaign externally to make party officials better understand and serve the needs of ordinary people. She believes that, just as the party must be at the apex of political control of the state, the party's central authorities i.e., the Politburo, PSC, or himself as general secretary must exercise full and direct political control of all party activities. Xi's policies have been characterized as economically liberal but politically conservative by Cheng Li of the Brookings Institution. Topic. Censorship. Document No. 9 is a confidential internal document widely circulated within the Communist Party of China in 2013 by the party's general office. It was first published in July 2012. The document warns of seven dangerous Western values, constitutional democracy, universal values of human rights, civil society, pro-market neoliberalism, media independence, historical nihilism, criticisms of past errors and questioning the nature of Chinese-style socialism. Coverage of these topics in educational materials is forbidden. The release of this internal document, which has introduced new topics that were previously not off-limits, was seen as Xi's recognition of the sacrosanct nature of Communist Party rule over China, since she became the general secretary of the CPC censorship has been significantly stepped up. Chairing the 2018 China Cyberspace Governance Conference on 20 and 21 April 2018, she committed to "...fiercely crack down on criminal offenses including hacking, telecom fraud, and violation of citizens' privacy." His administration has also overseen more internet restrictions imposed in China, and is described as being "...stricter across the board," on speech than previous administrations. Xi's term has resulted in a further suppression of dissent from civil society. His term has seen the arrest and imprisonment of activists such as Xu Jiyong, as well as numerous others who identified with the New Citizens Movement. Prominent legal activist Pu Zhijiang of the Weichuan Movement was also arrested and detained. The situation for users of Weibo has been described as a change from fearing that individual posts would be deleted, or at worst one's account, to fear of arrest. A law enacted in September 2013 authorized a three-year prison term for bloggers who shared more than 500 times any content considered defamatory. The State Internet Information Department summoned a group of influential bloggers to a seminar instructing them to avoid writing about politics, the Communist Party, or making statements contradicting official narratives. Many bloggers stopped writing about controversial topics, and Weibo went into decline, with much of its readership shifting to WeChat users speaking to very limited social circles. In July 2017, the character Winnie the Pooh was blocked on Chinese social media sites because bloggers had been comparing the plump bear to Xi. This followed an incident where Chinese authorities censored a nine year old for comments about Xi's weight. Taiwan In the 19th Party Congress held in 2017, she reaffirmed six of the nine principles that had been affirmed continuously since the 16th Party Congress in 2002, with the notable exception of "...placing hopes on the Taiwan people as a force to help bring about unification." 
According to the Brookings Institution, Xi used stronger language on potential Taiwan independence than his predecessors towards previous DPP governments in Taiwan. In March 2018, Xi said that Taiwan would face the punishment of history. Topic: <laughs> Personal life. She married Kay Lingling, the daughter of Kay Hua, an ambassador to Britain in the early 1980s. They divorced within a few years. The two were said to fight, almost every day, and after the divorce Kay moved to England, she married the prominent Chinese folk singer Peng Liyuan in 1987. Peng Liyuan, a household name in China, was better known to the public than she until his political elevation. The couple frequently lived apart due largely to their separate professional lives. Xi and Peng have a daughter named Xi Mings, who graduated from Harvard University in the spring of 2015. While at Harvard, she used a pseudonym and studied psychology and English. Xi's family have a home in Jade Spring Hill, a garden and residential area in northwestern Beijing run by the Central Military Commission. Peng described Xi as hardworking and down to earth. When he comes home, I've never felt as if there's some leader in the house. In my eyes, he's just my husband. Peng has played a much more visible role as China's first lady compared to her predecessors. For example, Peng hosted U.S. First Lady Michelle Obama on her high-profile visit to China in March 2014. She was described in a 2011 The Washington Post article by those who know him as pragmatic, serious, cautious, hardworking, down-to-earth and low-key. He was described as a good hand at problem-solving and seemingly uninterested in the trappings of high office." He is known to love U.S. films such as Saving Private Ryan, The Departed and The Godfather. He also praised the independent filmmaker Jia Zhang. In June 2012, Bloomberg reported that members of Xi's extended family have substantial business interests, although there was no evidence he had intervened to assist them. The Bloomberg website was blocked in mainland China in response to the article. Since she embarked on an anti-corruption campaign, the New York Times reported members of his family were selling their corporate and real estate investments beginning in 2012. Relatives of highly placed Chinese officials, including seven current and former senior leaders of the Politburo of the Communist Party of China, have been named in the Panama Papers, including Deng Jiagui, Xi's brother-in-law. Deng had two shell companies in the British Virgin Islands while she was a member of the Politburo Standing Committee, but they were dormant by the time she became General Secretary of the Communist Party in November 2012. Honours <laughs> 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 Foreign Honors International Olympic Committee, the Golden Olympic Order the 19th of November 2013 Belgium Grand Cordon of the Order of Leopold the 30th of March 2014 Venezuela Grand Cordon of the Order of the Liberator the 20th of July 2014 Cuba Order of Jose Marti the 22nd of July 2014 Pakistan Nishan e Pakistan the 21st of April 2015 Saudi Arabia Order of Abdulaziz Al Saud the 19th of January 2016 Serbia, Grand Collar of the Order of the Republic of Serbia, the 18th of June 2016. Belarus, Order for Promotion of Peace and Friendship, the 29th of September 2016. Palestine, Grand Collar of the Star of Palestine, the 18th of June 2017. Russia, Knight of the Order of Saint Andrew, the 3rd of July 2017. United Arab Emirates Order of Zayed the 20th of July 2018 key to the city Muscatine Iowa US the 26th of April 1985 Muscatine Iowa US the 14th of February 2012 Montego Bay Jamaica the 13th of February 2009 San Jose Costa Rica the 3rd of June 2013 Mexico City Mexico the 5th of June 2013 Buenos Aires, Argentina, the 19th of July 2014. Topic: See also. New Jujiang Army. One Belt One Road Initiative. Xi Li administration. Xi Jinping thought. General Secretary Xi Jinping important speech series. Equals equals notes. <laughs>